Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to create what I'm calling a moon drip photo manipulation effect. And I'm pretty sure moon drip is an anime term that I'm not using correctly but that's what I'm calling this photo manipulation tutorial for today. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.14 which at the time of this tutorial is the latest version of GIMP. But of course before I get into that I want to direct you guys over to my website at DaviesMediaDesign.com. As always I have tons of GIMP and Inkscape tutorials on here as well as my GIMP book of layers and GIMP and Inkscape help articles so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in my GIMP 2.10 masterclass from beginner to pro photo editing on Udemy. You can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting GIMPschool.com and as I mentioned you can purchase my GIMP book of layers on Amazon or get it free with a premium membership to Davies Media Design. I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So I'll be using two photos for today's tutorial. I'll be using this photo of a full moon and this photo of a waterfall. Both are free to download on Pixabay. And I just went with the 1920 version, so 1920 by 1279. And actually this one I think I did the full, yeah, so 1971 by 766. You won't necessarily need the full size image. If you do decide to go with the full size image, you're going to have to create a free Pixabay account. Again, totally free, but I'll include links to these in the description of the video. So I'll minimize that. So here is the final result. So what I have is a moon and it looks like it's melting into this waterfall and it creates this really cool effect. I've also added a bunch of color effects to this and I've made it look more so like dusk or more near nighttime. So if I scroll down and I shift click, this was the original image and then shift click again, here's the final. There's a decent amount to get into with this photo manipulation tutorial. So let's go ahead and dive in. And I'll start by opening up my main image of the waterfall and I'll do that by going to file, open if I haven't opened this before or in my case, open recent. And I'll just click on the waterfall photo. So here's the waterfall photo and I'll just double click and rename this waterfall and hit the enter key. The original name is like Seljalinspas. Seljalinspas. I think it's Icelandic or something. And now I'll come over and click my duplicate icon because I want to create multiple copies of this original layer. We're going to create multiple forms of lighting for each one of these. So I'll come over here and I'm just going to name this one Waterfall Bright. And we're going to leave it at one copy for now. So on the Waterfall Bright layer, I'm going to come over and go to Colors, Color Temperature. So this will be the exact same as the original, but we're just going to make it warmer and a little bit brighter. So I'll turn my intended temperature up and that's gonna make this image much warmer as you can see. You can pretty much go all the way to the right and it's gonna look pretty decent in this case. I'll just go with somewhere around 10,000 Kelvin. So we've cranked the warmth up quite considerably and I'll click OK. And before I move on to brightening this up, I'm just gonna duplicate this because I want both of these images to have the same color temperature. So I'll just rename this waterfall day by night, hit the enter key. We're going to turn this into the Dusk version. I could just rename this Dusk. But now I'll come back over here to the Waterfall Bright layer. Let's hide that Waterfall Day by Night layer. So on this layer, I'm going to come over to Colors, Levels, and I'm just going to drag in the highlights a little bit. And this is going to brighten up the image. And I can also drag the midtones over as well. And if you want to add a bit more contrast, you can also bring in the shadows a bit. That looks pretty good, so I'll click OK. And now I'll come up to the Waterfall Day by Night layer, and I'm actually going to change this to Dusk because this is going to get annoying. Waterfall Dusk. And now I'll come over and go to Colors, and I'll come down here to Levels. And in this case, I'm going to do the opposite, so I'm just going to crank this down a little bit so it looks darker. And crank the midtones down as well. So you can see it's already looking significantly darker here. Maybe not too much though. That looks pretty good. So I'll click OK on that. So now we have our three different layers, our original waterfall layer, which we're not going to do anything with. Then the waterfall bright layer, which is a slightly brighter version of the original. And then the waterfall dusk layer, which is a darker version. I'm going to leave these photos the way they are for now. We're going to work on them later. But next I'm going to import the photo of the moon and then we're going to erase the background. So to start I'll come over and grab the photo of the moon and let me just hit control Z to revert this back. I was experimenting before. So this is what your photo should look like. 
And now I'm just going to click and drag this over to our blank composition and drag it on top of the photo and release. And I'll come over here and rename this moon and hit the enter key. So I need to get rid of the background. One way you guys are probably thinking of is you can come over here and change the layer mode to something like screen. The issue with that is that there's a lot of black inside of the moon right now. So if I do that method for getting rid of the background, it's going to get rid of a lot of the detail in the middle of the moon as well. And I don't want that. So I'll hit control Z. What I'll actually do is use the foreground select tool. And I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to this tool. I recommend you check that out. But in this case, it's pretty simple because we have a round shape and it's on a completely black background. So what I'll do is I'll come over to the foreground select tool and I do have my feather edges option checked and the radius is set to three here. It's not entirely necessary, but I think in this case, it's just gonna help keep the edges from looking too jagged. So what I'll do is make sure I'm on the draw background drawing mode. And then I'm just going to loosely draw around the circle here. So around the moon and connect that and release my mouse. Hit the enter key. That's gonna bring up a preview of everything that's selected as my background right now. So everything in blue, everything inside the blue, which is basically just a lighter blue, or as you can see down here, a more transparent blue is going to be the foreground. So what you'll have to do is come over here and click on draw foreground, or in your case, it might've done it for you automatically, but make sure you're on draw foreground. And what I did was I just cranked the stroke width all the way up until it was about the size of the moon. And that way, instead of having to sit here and paint inside the moon, I can just line this up like so and just one click. And that's going to select everything that is my foreground or the entire moon. It's not perfect, but that's okay. That's what the algorithm is for. And making sure I'm set to matting 11, I'll hit the enter key. And that will select our moon. In this particular instance, it didn't do as good of a job as it did originally uh, the first time I did this. That's all right. I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. I think the feather edges will take care of that issue for the most part. So I'm just gonna hit the enter key on here one more time. That's gonna bring up our selection area. So now I'll hit control I. Of course, if you want, you guys can go in here and clean up anything that it didn't select from the moon. Actually, the bottom portion doesn't matter as much because we're gonna mask that out anyway. But once I've hit control I to invert my selection area, I'm gonna hit the delete key on my keyboard. That's gonna delete everything outside of the selection area we just drew. And then I'll hit control shift A to deselect that. So now we have our moon and I'll hit the M key on my keyboard and now I can move this into place. So I wanna have this just above the waterfall uh, with a little bit spilling behind the rock face here. And I wanna have the edge of this part of the moon lined up with the edge of the waterfall right there. So hold control and zoom out. Next, I'm going to start adding some effects to the moon. So that's going to include brightening up the moon, changing the color and masking out any part that's going to be overlapping with the rock face. For starters, I'm going to change the layer. So right now the layer is way off here to the side because the moon originally was in the middle. So here you can see the original layer. So what I'll do is I'll come over to layer, layer to image size. That's going to change the layer boundary. And another thing is that it looks like some of the background here didn't get erased. So I'll come over and grab the eraser tool and just increase the size and making sure I'm on my moon layer, increase the size a bit more. I'll just erase any of that portion there. So hold control and zoom in now. Next, I'll add a layer mask to the moon layer. So I'll right click on here and go to add layer mask. Under initialize layer mask two, I'll choose white full opacity and click add. Then I'll come over and grab my paintbrush tool and I can click this little icon to switch my foreground and background colors to black and white. Hold control and zoom in a bit. I'm gonna decrease the size of the brush a little bit here and also increase the hardness. So by increasing the hardness of the brush, it's making the edges of the brush a little bit less soft and therefore there won't be as much fading going on here as I'm erasing. So you can see the fading right there. I want this to be a pretty hard brush, especially as I get closer to the actual rock face. And let me come over here and click on my moon layer. I'm just gonna decrease the opacity a bit so we can see behind the rock face here. Hold control and zoom in. Now we're gonna go pretty close to 100 here. So we'll go 95 on the hardness and turn the size of the brush down even more. So there you can see now it's an even harder brush. And I'll hit control Z. I actually need to make sure I'm back on my layer mask here. And now on my layer mask, I'm just going to paint 
parts of the moon out. And you can zoom in and use the left and right brackets on the keyboard to decrease or increase the size of your brush. And I'm zooming in, by the way, using my mouse wheel and the control key. So we'll just erase this so it matches pretty well. And I'll hold the space bar and that allows me to move my mouse over and therefore move over in the image. Hit the X key to switch over to white and I can paint some of this back in here. I erased a bit too much there. And then I'll move over, hit the X key again to switch to black. All right, hold control and zoom out. Hold control and zoom in. Let's just clean this up real quick. Hit the X key to switch to white. Bring down the size of my brush using the brackets on my keyboard and paint that in. All right, so now I'll come back to the moon layer and turn the opacity all the way up. There's what it looks like right now. Next, we're gonna add a glow to the moon and then change the color. And we're gonna do this over two different layers. So for starters, I'll come over and duplicate our moon layer. And let's come up top here and name this moon bright. Hit the enter key. And I'm pretty confident in the layer mask here. So what I'll do is click on the layer mask, right click and go to apply layer mask. So that puts everything on a single layer. I'm gonna keep this original layer mask on the moon layer though. Then I'm going to brighten this and change the color of it. So I'll come over here and go to colors, levels for starters. And I'm just going to adjust the level slider here. So I'm going to increase the brightness of this by dragging the highlight slider to the left and the midtone slider as well. And I'll change the color of it by coming over here and under channel, instead of value, I'm gonna come over to red. And by the way, I do have an entire tutorial on how to color correct using the levels tool. So definitely check that out. And now I'm gonna drag the red, the highlights over to the left because I wanna add more red to this. Don't wanna overdo it though, of course. And then I'll change this over to blue. And doing the opposite, I'm going to drag the shadow slider to the right. That's going to add a bit more yellow. So overall, we're getting warmer colors in the moon here. So there's before, there is an after. I'm happy with that, so I'll click OK. Next, I'm just going to make sure I'm still on the moon bright layer. Come over to Colors, Curves. And I'm just going to click and drag the highlights of my curves upwards. I don't want to overdo it because it's going to look really washed out if I do that. Really overexposed. I just want this to look really bright but still realistic. So I'll go with about right here. And I'll click OK. So there is our brighter moon. And I can hide this. That's before. That's after. Now I'll add my glow to this and I'll do that by duplicating the moon bright layer. And double click on this and rename this Moon Glow and hit the Enter key. Then come over to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And I'll increase the blur. And let me actually move this layer down below the Moon Bright layer. And you can just click on the composition again to bring up the blur dialog. So we're going to turn this up and this gives us a better idea of how this is going to look. We'll go with about there, so between 45 and 50, and I'll click OK. The glow is pretty intense down here. I think it might be a little too intense, so if I hold Control and zoom in with my mouse, I can right-click on the Moon Glow layer and go to Add Layer Mask, choose White Full Opacity and click Add, grab my paintbrush tool and switch over to black, increase the size, and I'll decrease the hardness pretty significantly here because I want this to be pretty soft with the brush. And we don't have to totally get rid of the glow down here, but I do think that it wouldn't be quite this bright of a glow uh, with the rock face happening there. So we'll just decrease that a little bit there and that's gonna be good for now. So hold control and zoom out using my mouse wheel. And if I click this little icon here, it's going to center up my image. Now it's time to revisit the waterfall dusk layer and we're going to add a layer mask to this with the purpose of making the photo look more dynamic by bringing in some of the highlights from the layer below. So I'll come over here to the waterfall dusk layer, right click and go to add layer mask and we'll go with white full opacity again. So I still have my paintbrush, it's set to black. 
I'll hold control and zoom out a bit with my mouse wheel. So what I can do now is I can start painting on the rock in areas where I might want to bring back some of the highlights. And actually for now, it's going to be pretty much everything, but we're going to go back and uh, change that up in a second here. So I'm going to increase the size of my brush. I'm going to decrease it here and I'm going to paint on the waterfall. Alright, so now I've painted a bunch on this layer mask. Almost everything has pretty much been brightened. Uh, but I'm going to fix that by hitting the X key on my keyboard. That's going to bring up my white. And I'm just going to decrease the size of my brush here. And just paint some of these areas back that I think should stay dark. So maybe some of the areas under the rock face. And I'll hit Control Z. I'm actually going to back up a little bit. You can always decrease the opacity of your brush. And that way the effect's not quite as intense. And I'm going to increase back to 100 for this part right here. And then decrease it back. So pretty much anywhere where I see a natural shadow occurring in the photo, I'm going to paint back on my layer mask with the white color to bring back the darker photo layer that's on top. All right, that's looking pretty good. Let me just paint on the side here a little bit more. All right, now that I have completed the moon effects for the most part, I'm going to now add some orange light to everything in the photo to make it all match a little bit better and make it look like the moon is reflecting light on objects in the photo. So I'll come over here and create a new layer and I'll name this orange light. And I'm going to change the layer mode here to soft light or overlay. I'm actually gonna go with overlay and change the fill width to transparency and click OK. So now I'll come over and click on my foreground color and I'll grab my eyedropper tool and I'm just gonna click and drag this on the moon until I get a nice color I like from the moon. So I'll go with this color for now and click OK. Then I'll grab my paintbrush tool and I'm just going to increase the size of my paintbrush, make sure my opacity is turned all the way up. And I'm going to use a pretty soft brush for this portion. So now I'm just going to paint the orange on here and you can see that it's changing the color of the water. And it's okay if it doesn't totally match right now, we're going to fix it in a little bit. And I'm just going to increase the size of my brush and just paint some orange on parts of the rock and over here as well. And then I'm going to decrease the size of my brush a little bit, hold control and zoom in and just paint some of the rock face up top here, like so. And I'm actually going to change the layer mode from overlay to soft light here. I think that looks a little bit better. So next I'm going to use the Dilly C Warp Transform tool, which is named after our Diamond Patreon supporter Dilly C, to blend the pixels from the moon into the waterfall so it looks like the moon is spilling light into the waterfall and basically is the water from the waterfall. So to do that, I'll come over to the moon bright layer and I'll come over and grab the Dilly C Warp Transform tool. I'll make sure that the transform itself is set to move pixels and the interpolation here is set to low halo. I'll hold control and zoom in and I'll start with this small brush here and let me actually increase the size a bit. Let's not overdo it here. So I'm just going to move these pixels in the moon so that they match the direction of the waterfall or at least are pretty close to the direction of the waterfall. It doesn't have to be perfect. But I do want to say the better of a job you do on this, the better the final photo will look. Let me just decrease the size of this brush a little bit here. So I'm just clicking on random pixels and dragging them downward into the waterfall. I'm actually going to move some of these back up. So this obviously doesn't look great. What I'll have to do is blend these in a little bit better. To do that, I'll start by coming over and grabbing the smudge tool. And that should apply your warp transform, by the way. And then I'm going to decrease the size of this brush here for the smudge tool. And I'm just going to smudge this in the direction of the waterfall. That way everything kind of blends in together.
Once I've done that, I'm going to now add a layer mask to this, and the purpose of the layer mask is to help us blend in the pixels from the moon with the pixels from the waterfall. That way it just looks a little bit more realistic. So I'll right click on here and go to add layer mask. I'll choose white and click add. Grab my paintbrush tool, switch my foreground and background colors to black and white by clicking that little icon. Increase the size of the brush here. And we want a nice soft brush for this, so I'll decrease the hardness. And now I'm just going to, making sure I'm on my layer mask, barely paint on these pixels here. And then I'm going to decrease the size quite considerably here. I just want to try to match the color of the pixels here with the color of the waterfall. So wherever you see these really bright pixels, I'm just trying to scale those back a little bit so that they don't totally mess up the real waterfall. So let's increase the size a bit here. And something else I can do is decrease the opacity of this. So that way we're not removing so many pixels uh, at one time. So this is just helping me blend these pixels in a bit better. And I'm just going to increase the size of my brush now, decrease the opacity even further. And now just work on sort of blending some of these. I'll hit the X key to switch over to white. So if I've erased too much of one part that I maybe decide I want to keep, I can just switch over to white, paint that white on the layer mask, and bring some of those colors back. I just want to decrease this a little bit. It's a little bit too prominent right there. Same with over here. So hold control and zoom in. So I'm just going to continue uh, using the different tools here to try to get this the way I want. So let's grab the Dilly C warp tool again. So this part will definitely take some tweaking and it might take you several attempts. And one thing you can also do is come back over here to the original waterfall layer and just sort of smudge some of what's going on back there, the details, just to keep too much from uh, coming through there. I'll come back up to the moon bright layer and I'll grab my heel tool this time. I'll control click on one of the dark spots here on the moon and I'm just going to add some of this detail into here so it looks more like the moon is pouring into this portion here. So I'll do the same up top here. So I'm just using the heel tool to paint some pixels in here. And then we can grab the smudge tool and just work on smudging some of the edges around there. Hold control and zoom out. So there's just a few finishing touches I want to add to this. For one, I want to try to make the colors of the waterfall and the moon match a little bit better. And finally, I want to add a vignette to this to bring it all together. So I'll start by coming up top to the orange light layer, and I'm just going to come over to colors, hue saturation, and I'm just going to adjust the hue here. So you'll see just by switching the hue uh, slider to the right a little bit, it just made these colors match a bit better and it brought the image together. So I'll come over and click OK. And lastly, I'll come up here and create a new layer to add my vignette to. Make sure that the mode here is set back to normal. And click OK. Then I'll come over to Filters, Light and Shadow, Vignette. And I'm just going to shift the center of the vignette to the right a little bit using the Center X slider. And I can also change the proportion or the squeeze just to change the shape of this a little bit. I'm trying to put more of the focus on the moon here instead of having this centered to the image. And I'm going to increase the radius a bit as well. So just like that, and I'll click OK. So now if I scroll down, shift click, here was the original. Shift click again, there's our final photo. 
All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you could subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Don't forget to click the bell icon and be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can also check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.